What's up guys? Welcome back to episode 8 of Kerbal Space Program. So, uh, as you can see here, we are doing a pretty big mission. Uh, this is going to be a lot different than what we've been doing. We're finally getting out of the solar system and getting to other places. So as you can see right now, we are building a rover. And this rover is headed to Duna. Uh, this is going to be a pretty cool project. I'm doing kind of a dual, uh, a dual mission here. So with this rocket, I'm going to have attached to it a relay sat that's going to go with this rover. And the rover is also going to have a landing base. So pretty much no matter what, we're going to keep constant connection to the KSC. And on top of that, we're going to be landing at the poles of Duna. That way, so if the satellite's not in range, we can hit the KSC. Uh, and if the satellite is in range, great, we'll be able to hit the KSC, so we'll never lose connection. And uh, right now I'm just testing out the rover, making sure everything works. Uh, had the wheels backwards and then accidentally blew up the whole ship right there. So back to the drawing board and I go back to editing the wheels to make sure everything's right and then inverting them and making sure it all works. Uh, this first part of the video is just to show you kind of how I design the rover kind of what my mindset was going through it uh the rover is going to have not a relay dish but it will have a communitron uh so we can connect directly either to the landed um base or to the satellite in orbit and as you see i didn't actually mean to put an extra solar panel under the rover i just had symmetry on and forgot about it but luckily it's not gonna harm the mission and here we go i got the wheels working the way i wanted to uh, everything's working so now we're headed to build the second part of this mission which is the satellite it's a pretty simple satellite just a relay dish on a probe core um, I don't show it right here but I go back and add uh, batteries and solar panels to this thing and then here we go just editing the the fairing here to make sure it is in there correctly and then we build out the fairing and that is the payload that we will be taking to Duna completed. And then I think what I do next is, yeah, show you the finished product of everything all built and done. So here's kind of a slow-mo or regular speed of the entire rocket. We're gonna be using nuclear power, what we just got, uh, to send this thing to Duna. So here we go on to launch. This was pretty easy to, to carry up into orbit. It was pretty light. I was expecting it to be much harder than it was to carry and I didn't know how to use the nuclear engines and packed just way too much fuel I should have uh, I only put one nuclear engine on there when I should have put multiple because I had like 6,000 meters per second of Delta V and barely any thrust to weight so these burns took forever I've heard of longer this one only took eight minutes I think so I've, I've heard of longer burns so here's our main sail stage, getting us most of the way to orbit. And then all we have to do is use the rest of our poodle stage. And we actually don't even use the entire poodle stage. I deorbit it. And then we switch to our nuclear stage in just a second. I think we use a little under half um, of the fuel in the poodle stage. I actually like the design quite a bit of the rocket. Oh, and uh, to add on, I did add monopropellant, as you just saw there. Um, this thing is very hard to turn and steer and get to your maneuver node. So if you're coming up on one quick, that monopropellant is so helpful. As you can see, I put it right there on the fairing uh, with, a mo with a monopropellant tank. And here we're getting our encounter with Duda. Duda? Oh my goodness, I can't talk right now. Duna. And luckily I got it first try. Not, not anything too hard to do. So I'm just working around. Now, the monopropellant did somewhat mess up our trajectory here. But it was worth it instead of having to wait 30 minutes to turn the ship. And here we go heading to the maneuver node. And I make sure I'm saving because the rover's inside of a payload and we have another thing. So I want to make sure the Kraken doesn't grab us. Luckily, nothing goes wrong here. The transfer to Duna goes quite smoothly. Other than the monopropellant, 
issues that we have. Uh, we kept getting off course over and over and over again. And I wanted to capture at the equator. I did not know if it was going to be easier to capture at the poles. It might have been, but I just went ahead and captured at the... Or not, I didn't actually capture at the equator, but I made the maneuver node at the equator. That way I kind of could gauge what I was trying to do. And here's the RCS thrusters messing up the, <laughs> the trajectory here. So I just turn off RCS and pretty much just use the engines to try and fix this and there we go finally into a polar capture point which worked out perfectly just after a, a few recorrections of the rcs so now that we have our encounter and our maneuver node planned and ready to go we can pretty much just fast forward here and get to doing it through transfer not a too complicated process. I was watching our signal strength here to make sure that we didn't run out of signal. I would have been upset at that point. Uh, the burn here was much shorter. Just due to doing us lower gravity than Kerbin. Only about, right now, yeah, 5 minutes, 20 second burn. And I fast forward through most of this. I think I cut some of the burn off. Just because watching these long burns can be kind of, you know, just like this, watching a long burn. But it wasn't that bad. Uh, we went ahead and deployed all of the solar panels, all of the peripherals, peripherals however you want to say it. And made sure everything was working smoothly, which it was. The satellite was ready to decouple whenever we got circularized. I didn't have to put two powerful solar panels. I could have, but it would have just been a waste of weight, really. Um, the 3 by 2s work just fine here. And the relay probe that I had up there wasn't anything that was going to be pulling much power, so I didn't see a see a need to put on the gigantor solar panels and here we are just fine-tuning the last little bit of circularization here and we have so much fuel left more than half 5,000 meters per second of Delta V left Whew. well now that I've done that I know how to build a, a better optimized nuclear stage that way we can transfer better Heck, we might be able to just bring this entire thing to a to the jewel system, which actually I know we can. Ooh, or maybe Moho. Probably drop a probe off of Moho, although this does use parachutes. But the spark stage might be able to land us. So here we go, decoupling the relay sat and activating its engine to be prepared for an insertion into a polar orbit. We're already in a semi-polar orbit, but I wanted to get it uh, nice and clean looking. And I go ahead and deploy all the solar panels here. That way we don't lose power on a time acceleration, which is very annoying. I've done that many times. So now I make sure I deploy everything. And here's a little cinematic shot of the probe over Ike and Duna. But anyway, so now we're going to put this thing into a nice, clean-looking polar orbit. Um, I wasn't sure where to do the inclination change. We had plenty of fuel, so if we made any mistakes, it, and this burn wasn't even that expensive. So uh, we can continue to move this probe around as needed if we uh, do any further if we move the rover farther down or we need to move its position, uh, the probe has plenty of fuel to do anything we needed to. Pretty cheap burn, pretty easy, and bam, done. And now we can go ahead and get ready to switch back to the mothership and prepare to land. Which I put a ton of parachutes on here, uh, two spark engines with four Oscar tanks, as you can see right there just to make sure we land uh, smoothly. Here's a drink of water. 
So I wanted to land as close to the edge of the pole as possible. Sometimes this can be a little bit difficult, especially if you have a nuclear stage um, that's just hard to control with RCS and just a pain. So I tried my best to get a good polar landing point. I had never actually done a landing like this. This was my first attempt at, at something like this. So I think uh, it went very well for a first try. And here we go. We're getting closer to the maneuver node here. And like I said, I, to do any of these basically required RCS, the ship was just not moving without it. So even though it made deep space maneuvers kind of a pain, it was definitely worth it in the long run. So I just kind of fast forward here as we reach the North Pole of Duna. Look at that. The new uh, textures that they put onto all the planets, or a few of the planets, look so good. Everything looks so crisp. Especially with any visual pack, really. This game looks so good. So this is when I realized, oh, the atmosphere is a little thicker than I thought it was going to be. I thought it started a lot lower. Um, but I was wrong. And so we're going to land a little sooner than I thought we would. But no issue. We land in a really nice area. Nice and flat which I think is most of the poles of Duna, nice and flat. Although I do see a pretty cool crater over there now that I'm looking at it. And here we go, just slowly burning down with our nuclear stage. Which we will definitely ditch we're not going to land with the nuclear stage we're going to ditch this lower part here and then land with the spark engines i just wanted to make sure we slowed down as much as possible before i was ready to deploy our payload So at about this point, I realized it's going to be the best option to go ahead and decouple this. Which, make sure you turn your engine off before you do that. And honestly, just four drogue shoots would have been perfectly fine for this. And I didn't even realize that I had put the... Um, oh, and there went the nuclear stage. Now, all these parachutes actually flipped over the... <laughs> the module here and I was not expecting that so we have to cut all of the regular parachutes like I said the drogue chutes would have been just perfectly fine enough for this kind of mission and we're just slowly sinking here and this mission did require us to land right side up we couldn't have flipped over so if you're doing something like this that requires a, a certain orientation, make sure that you're staying on top of that and watching out for your parachutes. It was kind of a, a pain to find all of the, uh, the main chutes, uh, which if you're having problems doing that, just go over to your staging queue and you can just do all that there. And after cutting this last parachute, we get pointed the correct direction and then activate our spark engines and get landed quite safely. And there we go, a nice easy landing looks great the whole area looks great so now we can open up and deploy the rover here which made it safely on its journey down as well make sure you save before you decouple anything uh just so it doesn't all fly apart and explode like it did at the launch pad as you can see right there it's wanting to but after getting it in probe control we were able to exit the the hub easy enough 
And same as before, make sure you deploy all of your peripherals um, before you do any extended missions. You don't want to run out of power and not be able to deploy anything and then uh, it'd be a failed mission. So make sure you deploy everything before you transmit or rover around or anything. So I added plenty of science to do on this mission. Uh, just checking the signal strength again. I added pretty much everything I had. Uh, of course, we didn't bring a manned crew, so most of these experiment or two of these experiments could not be repeated. I could have just plopped on a bunch of goo canisters, but um, I didn't know where to put. I could have put two probably right there, but it would have just taken up space and been annoying. So taking one of the non-repeatables and then having the other ones to transmit works just fine. And we're kind of on an incline here, so the rover keeps wanting to just roll away. <laughs> and uh, this specific rover didn't need too much power. I just uh, strapped on, I think, four batteries and a 3 by 2 there. And that does the job just fine as we go around our hub network here. Which, as you can see, we strapped on a Communitron and a Relay Dish, just in case, to be safe. And we actually have extra fuel in this landing stage. So, if you wanted to, you could design... Uh, you'll have to add some extra parachutes and make sure you don't deploy all of them. But you could technically reload the rover and move the entire base somewhere else instead of having to rover all the way there like we missed our initial target so if i had been better prepared we could technically fly the base somewhere else and rover around and get even more science but this is just a gorgeous view duna's poles looks so good with ike up there in the sky and the sun here we go with a little cinematic wide shot of the the landing site so yeah, I was really happy with this mission. I think it went swimmingly well, and uh, I was really happy to complete this. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I've, I'm really enjoying this series so far, and everything about it is just a lot of fun to do, and a lot of fun to play, a lot of fun to record and edit. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode.